Hello and welcome to the first of two videos in this lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at effects. So today will be an introduction on how to put effects on a track and then in the next video we're going to look at how you can use the same effect across multiple tracks which is normally a bit more of a sort of head scratcher for people. So I'm introducing this method first. So here's the arrangement which I uh, literally threw together uh, in previous videos. I'm just going to use this as a vehicle for all the other things rather than spending loads of time playing around and you can see the progression or otherwise of this piece of music as we go. So here's a drum track. Now what I'm going to do is just solo this with the S button here and you can hit S on your keyboard if you want as well to do that. So we can just hear the drums. So there they are, just the drums. Okay, now there are two places where you can put audio effects on. So there either is audio inserts, which I'm going to show you how to get to regardless of how the inspector is set or on the channel settings window. So if you want to do it in the inspector, typically there will be two headings with drums. One of them here is about the information that's on the track, so the MIDI information and also something to do with the mixer, so level, pan, etc. But there's also further down, there's the instrument section. So if we use this triangle to move that back up and then click this one here, we get some of the elements of the audio side of things, including audio inserts, which is what we're looking at today. So you can click that and get audio inserts and you should see eight slots there. Or probably simpler, just click the edit channel settings button, the E, and then the channel settings window will appear. And then here is where the inserts are. So let's put an effect on the drums. So when you click in one of these slots, a list of effects appears and you can either just browse through them by opening them up here or you can search. So I'm going to search for delay and we see we've only got three delays. These are the ones you should have and I'm going to put stereo delay. We're on a stereo track but it wouldn't matter too much if you put the in quotes wrong thing anyway. So here's our delay. You can hear the effect of it so I'm going to play the track and you might have noticed it just got louder and the reason is the delay is now playing and if I hit stop the track has stopped but the sound is carrying on and that's the delay playing this so the delay we've got one here which is panned to the left and one which is panned to the right and both of them are set to sync and they're set to be one bar long so one stroke one means a whole bar for a more sort of musical effect let's reduce the left one to a quarter which is one B and the right one to an eighth and now I'll go back to the beginning and then play so there you can hear sort of like an 80s dodgy electro mix type of effect on the drums which is quite a nice sound but it's too loud there's too much of it so unless you were building up to some kind of breakdown which you might want to do that would be too loud for the whole song so an important control on most effects, not all, but most of them, is the mix control, where you can go between dry, which is the original sound, and wet, which is the affected sound. So at the moment, we're hearing equal amounts of both. We don't want that. Let's turn it down to about 10%-ish. And then have a listen. And now you can hear there's a bit of that sort of shuffly, groovy sound in there from that, but it's not overpowering the main effect and once everything else comes in you probably find you might not even notice it but it's the kind of thing that just adds a bit of subtle interest to it so let's go back to there and open up the channel settings window again so there's our delay now another control which is really useful is the bypass effect button so if you want to hear what the effect sounds like on and off if you press this when this is on the effect is off And back on okay just gonna uh, solo that track so we don't hear anything else now the bypass button is really useful so I'm just going to bypass that because we're going to put a different effect on here and this time I'm going to do it in the inspector so you see the effect is exactly the same you can see there's that stereo delay so it's the same thing just represented differently this time, I'm going to go for a phaser. So I'm going to put a phaser on the drums. And listen to that. You can hear that sort of 1970s style uh, effect. 
And again, it's got a uh, mix control, so we could turn it down to none, or you could just have the phased effect, but about halfway on this is more like it. And there's other controls, and feel free to play around with them. You're not gonna break anything. Worst thing you need to do, I'll show you how you get rid of an effect, but get all sorts of wacky effects with them, etc. And I'm gonna show you in a later video how to make that happen automatically. So let's say you want to get rid of that effect because you've decided you didn't like the 70s after all. You click on the triangle here and just pick no effect. It'll ask you if you want to get rid of the changes. So that's a good thing because sometimes you might have made loads of changes and accidentally do that. But we're going to throw that away. And now we're back to just having our delay on there. Obviously, you can put effects on different tracks. So here, let's just look at the strings. And this time, I'm going to put a different modulation effect. So I'm going to put a chorus on there. And even on the default settings, it provides a bit of width. So what it does is actually it detunes the sound and delays it very, very slightly. Um, so it just adds some subtle width. Now, there are also presets. So if you click up in the black box of mystery at the top of each effect window, if there are any presets for them, then they will appear in this, a bit like the presets for uh, Halley and Sonic, etc. And then you can pick something you think, oh, I'll try it. And don't necessarily worry about the fact that it, it looks like it's for the wrong instrument, but so let's try that wide. So you see that's made all the settings different. So the point of this is to get a bit of understanding, just play around, find out what different effects are, because you're probably at a point where you don't really know what the effects are. Some of them may not seem to do anything. So things such as dynamic effects are a little more involved but most of the other effects here, distortion, EQ, etc., um, you'll probably find, well, that one you probably won't find much use for, um, but these, you will find some use in some of them, and there'll be those moments where you, you hear a sound and you go, oh, that's what that is, etc., which is, you know, a lot what this is all about. So learning what these different effects are in your own terms so you know what a chorus sounds like, what a flanger sounds like, etc., is a really important part of this. So, Spend some time just noodling around and putting different effects on different tracks. And remember with this, if you don't like it, you can always just go back to the one that you'd saved before. So you just go back to revert and then it will take you back to how it was. So if I click revert now, say, yep, let's go back to that. It loads up exactly as it was when I started this morning. And you can see there's no effects on the drums and there's no effects on the strings. Yeah. So that's it for today's video and in the next video we're going to look at how you can share the same effect across multiple tracks and why you would do that so i hope you found that useful and i will see you again soon